In this video, I'm going to use Unreal Engine 4 to create a simple cannon that fires projectiles that will follow a parabolic path. This is part of a project I've assigned to my students, so this video is really for absolute beginners to Unreal Engine. Uh, I'm going to just walk through each of the steps and try to explain what all the pieces are. All right, let's get started. Uh, we know that uh, this is what a blank project looks like. It's a blank blueprints project. If we go in and say play, we get the default pawn, we can fly around, but there's really not much else happening. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, get a pawn that looks a little bit more like a cannon. So I'm going to right click down here and create a new blueprint class. This will be a, a pawn um, that is a, an agent or an actor that can be possessed by the player, that's controlled by the player. So I'll call this BP Cannon because it's my cannon and it's a blueprint. Uh, so let's go into there. And I'm going to do this just very, very simply. Um, you know, if you can, if you know how to use 3D modeling tools, you could do something more fancy or you could import some assets, but I want to show just how you can do real quick and dirty stuff here. So let me just grab a sphere and you know what? The sphere is going to be fine for now because our first step is just to see that sphere show up. Now, if I say play, um, of course, I'm still spawning in the same position with that default pawn. I haven't plugged anything in together. So uh, the next step that I like to follow is to create a new game mode. So I'll call this BP um, game mode. That's fine. And in this game mode, I can specify uh, what the default pawn is. So I'll change that to BP cannon. So uh, again, see that the default value is a default pawn. Now it'll be BP Cannon. So if we go back to the level and press play, um, it's exactly the same because I haven't told the game to use my game mode. So we'll go to edit and project settings. And from here, we can go to maps and modes, tell it to use BP game mode. There we go, play. Right, so now I'm moving the mouse around, I'm hitting the keyboard, nothing's happening, um, but that's perfect. That's exactly what I expect because I have spawned my cannon and I'm sitting with my camera kind of right on my cannon, um, which isn't quite what I want. So my next step is going to be to uh, bring in a new camera that is outside of that pawn. So up here, I'll search for a camera. Whoops. I'll just drop it into my scene here. And then I can use uh, some of these controls to move it where I want it. So I want it to be facing my spawn point. So we can use these tools up here to rotate and scale. I'll turn this around this way, 90 degrees. And you know, when you get real good, you can remember W, E, and R as the keyboard shortcuts. Um, again, just trying to show something real simple here. So there, that looks like it's pointing at the spawn point, doesn't it? All right, so now we have to tell Unreal that as soon as the level starts, we want to switch to this camera. So I want to make sure that the camera is selected here in the World Outliner, and then go to Blueprints, Open Level Blueprint. So uh, if you right click here, notice I get an option to create a reference to that camera actor. Oh, that's really convenient. So you can select something in the scene and then access it in Blueprints. And the command here that I need to use is, need to use is a set view target <laughs> it's set view target with blend there it is so I have to turn off the concept context sensitivity to get the one that I wanted and we're going to run this as soon as the level is started my new view target is going to be that camera and we need to specify the target here is a player controller. So we can say get player controller. This takes an index as an argument, but if you're doing a single player game like this is, then uh, then this will always be zero. That's the, the local player. Um, so that should do it, I think. If we press play, yeah. So now we can see that uh, our camera is looking at our spawned cannon. Um, from this view, though, you know you can't really see what the camera is looking at because I'm using this uh, the spawn point, right? The the cannon is spawning on that point, um, which is okay, but it's really not quite what I want. I think it's a little bit awkward. So one thing you can do here is uh, we can get rid of the spawn point, 
and just drop the cannon directly into the scene somewhere. Uh, in fact, I sort of want it embedded in the ground a little bit to make it look a little more like a little bunker or something. Um, the real advantage here for me is that now I can reposition my camera a little bit more intelligently. So let's put it right there. And the other thing I need to remember to do is uh, this is a pawn that can be possessed by the player. The spawn point by default handles that, um, but now I don't have a spawn point anymore. So I need to go into the settings for the cannon and here, auto possess player, set that to player zero. So that means that as soon as we come into the game, player zero will be controlling this cannon. Now, of course, there's not, it doesn't do anything yet. So let's make that our next step. Oops. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and save the level. We'll just call it default map. And uh, let's remember to go to the project settings under maps and modes and set those as the editor startup and the game default. Good. Okay, so let's go back to the cannon. And I want to make it look a little bit more like a cannon. So I'm going to do this in, again, just a real simple way. I'm going to grab a cube and attach it to the sphere. So the cube is relative to the sphere, not to the default scene root. And if I just kind of, whoops, shrink up the scale a little bit here, I can get a shape that I want. There. See, now it looks like I've got a nice cannon coming out of here. Um, and in fact, from right here, we could, is this important? No, let's just keep it that size. That's fine, good enough. Okay, so from here, uh, we can see that we have the, the new geometry there. That's nice. Um, what I want to be able to do is use the keyboard to move this cannon up and down. Now, this is a little tricky because my uh, origin or my handle for this geometry is, is right in the middle of it, and we can't, we can't change that here. So if I were to rotate this, right, we can simulate it here, if we were to rotate it, it would do something like, um, whoops, something like this, but that's not what we want. We want it to look like it's, it's attached to here. So uh, here's a nice trick. Uh, again, using these components, I could add, um, let's see, let's add an arrow. And so the arrow is going to be a child of the sphere and the cube is going to be a child of the arrow. Here we go. Good, so where is the arrow? Kind of hard to see here. Let's uh, move this one. Whoops. Move this one out of the way. There. You can see the arrow is there. And so if I stick this again back here, it's sort of sitting on top of the arrow. But the advantage there is that the arrow, its rotation point is going to be in the center here. So again, if I kind of simulate the rotation here within the editor, oops. All right, that's what I want. That's the kind of behavior I'm looking for. Nice. Um, arrow is a little bit of an awkward name. Let's just leave it there for now. Again, this is kind of quick and dirty. Okay, we'll compile this. Um, next step, let's make it so that we can use the keyboard to raise and lower this cannon. Here's my idea here. Uh, we're going to go into the project settings and input, and we'll make an axis mapping. I'll call this raise cannon. And uh, one of the advantages of an axis mapping is that it's very easy to set up kind of opposite interactions. So I can make the keyboard up, have a scale of one, and then make a keyboard down, have a scale of negative one. So the idea there is uh, if I give this raise cannon command, it's going to go up with a scale of one, and then down is the same motion with a negative scale of one. Great, or a scale of negative one. All right. so who is going to intercept that command? Who is going to handle that input? Um, let's make a new player controller to handle that. So I'll go to the blueprint, let's make a new player controller. BP player controller is a fine name for it. Let's remember to go into our game mode and set that as my player controller. Okay, save and compile. Um, Go ahead and save that. You know, I regularly do a control shift S to just save everything. All right, so here is my player controller. 
and in here we want to grab the raise cannon event. And now just as a, you know, just to check to make sure this is working, let's just dump out the axis value so you can see what that looks like. I'll just uh, print string, grab that axis value, plug it in, we can see. So because it's an axis value and not an event, it's, it's always kind of every frame getting a value. If I press the up arrow, it changes to one, press the down arrow, it changes to negative one. Good. So let's make that do something more interesting. So we really only care about this when the axis value is not zero. So we can do that very easily. We can use, um, it's called a branch in Unreal, but uh, conveniently, if you look for the word if, it comes right up. So if this axis value is not equal, again, I did a search for kind of standard programming for not equal, bang equal, and this comes up, I'm comparing floats. So if that axis value is not zero, that's what I care about. If it is zero, I'm going to do nothing. But if it's not zero, then I can come out and uh, manipulate the rotation of my arrow component. So one of the things I'll have to do is, is get that pawn that's being controlled. So let's see, we can do that with uh, get controlled pawn. Here we go. And because we're in a player controller, um, this target will work. The player controller knows what pawn it's currently controlling. So this will get that pawn. Um, and we want to get the uh, get the arrow component out of it. Um, but the, the result of this here is just a pawn, a pawn object reference. We need to cast that to the class that actually has our geometry in it. So what we'll do here is cast to uh, BP cannon. I'm going to cast this to a BP cannon. Because then from here, we get the arrow. So that's, that's the arrow, um, right, this one you can't really see it in there because it's hidden, but it's the arrow inside there. And what we want to do is, uh, is rotate that arrow. So uh, we can do that pretty easily with um, add relative rotation. All right, I wanna make sure that gets called. All right, so what is the rotation value? Well. If, uh, if we're going up, it's going to be positive. If we're going down, it's going to be negative. And this is all happening uh, on the y-axis, if I'm not mistaken. So let's go ahead and make a new rotator that will either be positive y or negative y based on uh, the value of this axis value. So we can take the axis value and multiply it by some float. say five. And this will essentially be the rate of rotation. And plug that into here. And that looks like it should work. Um, well, at least we'll see if it works by testing it. But uh, yeah, the pieces look like they're in place. So we'll play, up arrow, nice, down arrow. We get some weird behaviors there at the edges, but I'm not gonna worry about that for this purpose of this demo. Also, it goes through the ground. So <laughs> we'd probably wanna set some uh, maximum and minimum. It's also a bit too fast. Let's go ahead and just drop that down to one, really at which point we don't need that at all anymore. We could just plug that directly into there. And there we are. Now, if you wanted to be able to rotate the whole cannon uh, kind of left and right, you would do the same thing. Set up another axis and have it rotate the whole sphere or rotate that arrow depending on how you want it to handle it. Uh, again, with these really simple geometries, it doesn't matter so much. Okay, our next step is to actually make this thing fire. So let's go back to the content browser and make some kind of a projectile. Um, you know, when I look at this, it's also bothering me that this thing is sunken in the ground so much. I'm gonna pull that up a little bit. That's better. Okay, it's a question of happiness. All right, back over here. Let's make a projectile. This will be an actor. call it BP projectile. And once again, we'll give it some kind of very simple geometry. I'll just grab a sphere and uh, that'll be fine. Um, we probably want it to be a bit smaller. So let's call it uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Good. All right, now if we wanted to see what that looked like in terms of scale, we could always just grab one, bring it out here. 
and uh, see what it looks like. Maybe it's still a little bit too big. But let's just stick with it for now. Okay, um, so we want to make it so that when we press uh, the spacebar, let's say, uh, a projectile will be fired. So let's add the event first. We'll go to project settings and go down to the input and add an action mapping. So the uh, the barrel position was an axis mapping. It can go up and down, but the firing is just a dis discrete action. So we'll call this fire and we'll give it spacebar. Whoops. Good. That should do it. Back in our player controller, we can listen for that event. And, uh, you know, if you just want to do some quick debugging, we can make sure that we're getting that event. Yep. Good. Okay. So what do we want to do when we get that event? We want to uh, spawn a projectile and have it eventually launch forward. But let's start with just the spawning of a projectile. So uh, when we get this fire event, what we have to do is figure out where the uh, barrel of the cannon is currently pointing and then make a projectile and launch it out of there. So let's see. When we're pressed, we will get the, uh, let's again get controlled pawn. And once again, cast that into a BP cannon. And that'll allow us to get the barrel of the cannon. Um, well, let's see. I'm not sure exactly what the sequence is here. So let's get that spawn command in first. So we'll spawn actor from class. And the class will be uh, BP projectile. Good. Now the issue is where do we spawn it? We want to spawn it at the position of the barrel. So we can get the, well, you know what? Let's take a look again. I can't remember quite if we had give this a good name or not. It's just called cube. Let's call it barrel instead. Let's see, how do we rename that? There, that's a better name. I'll compile and save. Okay, back over here. We can say from the cannon, we will get its barrel. And the barrel, we can find its uh, world coordinates. Get world transform. Right, so that'll be its position uh, in terms of the, the entire world, and that's important because this projectile has to be spawned in world coordinates. It's not, you know, unlike this barrel, which is attached to the sphere, and together they form one unit, so the barrel is really relative to the sphere, the projectile is, is different. It's a world coordinate. It's, it's a new actor. So let's try that and uh, see how far that gets us. Okay, I don't quite understand what that error is, so let's just uh, try recreating this and see if it's a fluke. Spawn actor from class. Actor is BP projectile. This is the world transform. Yeah, that was just a fluke. Okay. Let's try it, see what happens. Move this around, spacebar. Look at that things are being created. It seems that the projectiles are actually inheriting the uh, transform of the barrel. I didn't expect that. Um, oh, but I should have because this is the world transform of the barrel. So, well, here's a neat trick. We can yeah, break that link and we can split this struct pin. The, the transform is a, a struct, which is a standard C or C++ construct for holding multiple data. Um, it's, it's sort of like a class with all public methods, uh, sorry, all public fields. Um, we can break the same thing here. We can split the struct pin and we can get the location and we can get the rotation and we can ignore the scale. And I think that'll get rid of that weird squishy problem. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. Of course, they're not moving at all. They're just spawning um, at, you know, which location are they spawning at? If you remember here, that's the actual location of the barrel, um, which is, again, good enough for this really quick demo. If you were bringing in your own static meshes, you could go in and set, um, you could set sockets here um, so that you could make the projectile come out here. But for the purposes of this quick demo, I'm, I'm not going to bother with that. 
Okay, uh, where were we? Over in player controller. Good. Um, our next step is to make it so that when we spawn the projectile, it will launch forward. So that's pretty easy to do. Um, when this thing gets created, we're going to add an impulse. Um, this target is not right. We want to add it to this guy right here. Okay. So what should our impulse be? Now remember, impulse is a, a moment of force added to a physics-enabled object. Ah, and so of course it won't work unless we simulate physics on our projectile. That's important. So back over here, um, just to show you what happens, let's put in an impulse of 10, I guess. <laughs> it acts kind of strangely. Um, in part because it's colliding with the barrel itself, uh, but they're also just not going the right direction. Because uh, this is a, a world direction, right? This is just pure x of 10, and that's not what we want. We want the direction to be uh, rotated by the rotation of the barrel. Um, but that's really easy to get at. So what we can do is, let's grab the, here's the barrel, remember? We have that over here. And we can get its world rotation. So again, that's the rotation of the barrel relative to the whole world, um, which is exactly what we want because this, this newly spawned projectile has to be relative to the world. So um, that's going to be the rotation. We need to rotate a vector by that much. So we can um, make a vector with that same magnitude and then rotate it by, this rota by that rotator. So rotate vector. That's my rotator. Use that as my impulse. Let's try it out. Well, it's still uh, colliding with the barrel, so... Okay, sorry about that. It took me a moment to realize what I had wrong. Uh, we need to... Uh, it's not a question of whether or not we generate overlap events. What we want to do is change the channel that's used here for the collisions. So if we set the, the barrel to not support collisions at all, then we can get in here and see <laughs> it just kind of ploops out little projectiles. Clearly what we need is a bit more impulse. So back in the player controller, let's scale this up to say 100. Order of magnitude more. Mm, that's still not quite enough. Let's give it a thousand. Nice. That might be too much actually. <laughs> Anyhow, that should be enough that you can get a very simple projectile being fired. Um, a lot of things we could do from here, of course. We could add some more geometry to our level so that we have things to, uh, to run our projectiles into. Right? You could add some, add some obstacles here and see what happens. You know, Why not? Let's add some obstacles here and see what happens. Let's see if that lined up right. Default behavior is pretty neat. Now, if you wanted to earn a point based on the how you hit it, right? You can always add some logic to the projectile itself and detect when that collision happens. Um, you could replace any of these placeholder meshes with with better meshes. Um, the sky's the limit, really. Here, so hopefully this gives you enough to empower you to explore this more on your own. Thanks for watching.